Hello guys, thank you very much for joining in. We are going to be talking about this chapter, the parametric and non-parametric test of independence. Again, this chapter is small, not very heavily tested. You might get one question from the exam perspective from this section. Okay, explain parametric and non-parametric. In the previous chapter, we have already given the brief description about parametric. Pra parametric is something which makes an assumption about the distribution of the data. Whereas non-parametric, they do not make any assumption. Right? They whatever is the actual distribution of the data, they will take that. Okay, now how this is used? Okay, when you are doing the hypothesis testing, the important part they part they want to cover is the correlation coefficient. I hope you remember what was correlation. Correlation is nothing but covariance between two assets divided by sigma of the first asset and sigma of the second asset. Right? Now we are we are thinking of doing a, a hypothesis testing, focusing on correlation. Okay. First of all, what is correlation? It measures the relationship between the two variables. How strong is the relationship? If the correlation between the two, okay, so correlation can be negative one, positive one, or zero one. It is going to be between these two, these numbers, okay? If you are getting a correlation of positive one, that means it is a perfect positive relationship. If you are getting a correlation as negative one, is perfect negative relationship if you're getting zero it means no linear relationship there can be non-linear relationship between the two variables there is no linear relationship that is what has been highlighted over here okay now when the sample autocorrelation for two variable is different from zero okay that is what they are trying to highlight okay whether the true population correlation is equal to zero or not Basically, we are running a hypothesis testing to test whether the correlation between two population is it zero or is it different than zero. Okay, that is the overall idea. So, how do we do the appropriate test? How do we run an hypothesis testing? For that, we'll have to use a t test. Okay, this is what you have to remember. And over here, we have to do n minus two. This is different. Okay, so mark this as star and remember this. Okay. And what is this logic? This is nothing but the test statistic that we are, we were calculating. Okay, R is nothing but what is the sample correlation, and N represents the sample size. So I'll just summarize what is happening over here. Okay, so you have two population, P1 and P2. Okay, my concern is whether the correlation between them is it zero or is it different than zero. So I will take sample one. I'll take a sample. And I will calculate the correlation between the sample. Okay. This correlation is used to verify whether the relationship between two is same or not. Okay. That is the overall idea. Okay. Now let us go to the test. Okay. What is the test happening? Test on the hypothesis that the population correlation is equal to zero or not. Okay. So look at when we do the hypothesis testing. Now, so is it equal to zero? Is it not equal? That is our approach. Okay. Suppose we we have two population. We have taken the sample from two population, and we computed the sample correlation. We got 0 0.3. By looking at the sample, we can we feel that no, the population correlation must be different. It might it must not be zero because sample that we have taken the correlation between the sample is 0 0.3, right? What is the sample size? 42. So what is going to be my degree of freedom? 40 because it is n minus 2. Okay. We are running hypothesis testing at 5%. So how do we write the null and alternate? Correlation is equal to zero. Correlation is not equal to zero. Perfect. We will be doing a test statistic. This is the same formula. The same formula that we did. But what is that? R into root of n minus two degree of freedom. Okay. Divided by one minus the R square. Okay. What is the number that we got? Two point three six. This is the same formula that has been used over here. Okay. Mark this as star. Okay. Mark this question as also star. Important from the exam perspective. Now, degree of freedom is 40 because the sample size is 42. We're doing n minus 2. Now, we have got the test statistic. We have to go to the t table. Okay. For a degree of uh, freedom of 40, 5%, and this is two tailed. Right. We'll have to go to the t back and we'll have to find the value. If I go over here and I just go to the t test, this is the t test student t distribution. Okay. If I go over here, it is two tailed. So we'll be looking at this. And it is what 5%. So I'll be looking at this. And then I will have to go towards the value 40. 
whose so degree of freedom is 40. So if I'm not wrong, the number is yes. This 2.021. That is my critical value. So I'll go to the book. Okay, so my critical value is going to be negative 2.021 and positive 2.021. What is my test statistic? It is over here. So we reject, right? We reject the null hypothesis. When we reject the null hypothesis, what I'm doing, I'm rejecting this and we are saying this, which means the correlation between the two variables is not equal to zero. Okay, we conclude that it is not equal to zero. Taking a quick pause, any confusion on this section? Obviously, you have to do this chapter once you are done with hypothesis testing because it has, it has some background of it. All good. Let us go to the further part. Now the next section is about Spearman rank a correlation test. Okay, Spearman rank. This is the way we calculate the Pearson correlation. What was Pearson correlation? Covariance of A B divided by sigma of A into sigma of B. The calculation that we do it is for Pearson correlation. Okay, but there are other approaches of finding correlation also which we have not touched till now. This is one approach, Spearman rank correlation. And this is a non-parametric approach because we don't assume anything. Okay, so now how do we do this correlation? It, the correlation is based on the ranking. Correlation is based on the ranking of the data. So first give the ranking and then we find the difference. Okay, I'll show you the calculation also. This is the formula of calculating the Spearman rank correlation. Look at the formula in detail. 1 minus okay, 6 into summation of d square. What is d square? This is the difference in the ranking. Divided by n into n square minus 1. Okay. This is the formula of calculating the correlation. Okay. This is the Pier Spearman rank correlation. For the benefit, I'll just quickly try to connect. One second. I have one PPT open. So, for example... One second. Yeah. So if suppose I have two assets and asset A and asset B. Okay. And I've taken years. Okay. So 2011, 2012, 2013, and 2014. Okay. This got around 10% positive. Okay. Negative 5%. This, this is the yearly return. Okay, then we got 12% and then we got 15% okay, for these, this asset. Let us assume it was negative 5% over here. Then we got 14%. Then we got uh, 9% and then we got 20%. Okay, so first step would be to find the rank. Rank for A. Okay, and then we will find the rank for B. Now, when we are deciding the rank, Okay, it's up to you. How do you decide? From the lowest to highest or highest to lowest? Now, I am going and doing lowest to highest. And for both, A and B, it should be same. So, for B, which is the lowest rank? Negative 5, right? So, I'll take the rank 1. Then, which is the second lowest rank? This. Then, what is the third lowest rank? This. And then, you have fourth. I hope everybody is clear on how I have given the ranking. Similarly, for B, it is going to be 1. Because this is the lowest. And the second lowest is this. And then, you have third lowest. And then, you have fourth lowest. This is the ranking that I have got. Okay, I'll be doing what? Now I'll find the difference in the ranking. Okay. 2 minus 1. Like that. Okay, now in this case, I want to do what? Summation of d square. Okay, I will not just calculate a difference. I'll calculate d square. Why? Because if I just add, it will lead to 0. So I'll do, I'll take this value and I'll just square it. I'll do everything. Now I will add. This is 6 and this is, do you realize this is what? This is nothing but the overall section 
of the formula which is this summation of d square we have got this what is the answer that we have got, we have got 6 so I am going to solve it like this 6 into 6 which is 36 what is n how many samples we had 4 na 2011 if I go to the excel 2011 to 2014 so 4 samples were there so it is going to be what 4 into 4 square minus 1 okay so what is going to be the answer it is going to be 36 divided by 16 minus uh, 551 which basically 15 15 4 size 90 sorry 15 4 size 60 60 so I have to do this 1 upon 1 minus 36 divided by 60 so I'll just use the reference over here so it's going to be 1 minus 36 divided by 60 the answer is 0 0.4 the okay, answer is 0 0.4 what is the approach the calculation is like this now 1 minus 0 0.4 so what is my correlation the final answer 0 0.6 this is the correlation as per the example is everybody okay on the calculation the sub look sat me hai hi and he Karan, Alan, everybody is okay? I am moving ahead. Okay. This is just to explain you how the correlation is actually calculated. Okay. Now, but what they are doing, they are not doing the calculation. They are asked, they are doing the hypothesis testing. Okay. Now, over here, do you realize this is the same test statistic? But instead of writing normal R, because normal R was for Pearson correlation, they have written it as S, which is Pearman rank correlation. The entire approach is same. Okay, entire approach is same, and then they will basically go and solve it. Okay, when the sample is greater than 30, why is greater than 30? If you remember, n is greater than or equal to 30, we can assume normal. Okay, that is why they have written it. And degree of freedom is n minus 2. We'll go to the table, t table, find the critical value, we'll calculate this test statistic. If it is falling in between, fail to reject, falling on the other side, reject. The approach is same. Okay, but we are not testing for Pearson correlation, we are testing for a Spearman rank correlation. Taking a pause, any confusion on this till this part? I am moving ahead towards the next section. Explain test of independence based on contingency table data. Okay, contingency means some bad thing is happening or basically some combination of things are happening. Contingent event, we generally call it as contingent event. Okay, that is why, uh, okay, or, or one more point which, which I want to highlight contingency means suppose one event leads to another event. That is why they have talked about two way table. Okay, in this example. Suppose we have figure 9.1 which is a contingency table where the characteristics are earning growth and dividend yield. We are talking about two things, growth of earning and dividend yield. Okay, now we want to test, we want to do hypothesis testing, test the hypothesis that two characteristics are independent of each other. That means two behavior, two feature, they are independent of each other. Are they contingent? That means are they dependent or are they independent? Okay, let us look at this. So they have given you this data. A dividend yield and earning okay now obviously we index look at this part we index three categories of earning okay as one two three that means this is my one this is my two this is my three similarly i can also cat, uh, do categorization for dividend this is my one this is my two and this is my three okay one two three one two three they have given the categories now look at this cell one comma one that means they are talking about this 28 that means there are 28 companies which has a dividend yield which is lower and also the earning growth is also lower. Right? What is this 14? There are 14 companies which has an earning growth which is very high and the dividend yield is also very high. Right? Look at this cell 3 comma 2. See over here 3 comma 2. They are talking about this part. So how do we read this? Huh? This is talking about earning and this is talking about dividend. Okay, that is why we got this number of 25. 
that means there are 25 companies which has a high earning growth potential but the dividend is medium okay i hope everybody is with me till this point at least they will be able to read the table properly okay chalo we'll move ahead now okay over here if you want to run this entire thing okay the test statistic is a chi square test calculated as follow okay so over here he, see if look at the references ah huh? o o means the number of observation cell 1 row 1 j1 do you realize this point row and column so what is my row my row is earning that was the first part what is my column dividend right column is dividend so that was the second part right so the number of observation basically they are saying what cell it is into what is ei this is the average expectation of that particular cell okay we'll see that now expectation of that and over here r refers to your row category c refers to column category okay r refers to row category c refers to column category okay now and the degree of freedom is this again this is slightly complicated so don't worry they will when they give you the exam in the question they will make it slightly simple they will solve most of the things for you okay the degree of freedom is 4 how did i got 4 see what is that what is the total row total row is 3 total column 3 so 3 minus 1 2 2 3 minus 1 2 we multiply we get the total degree of freedom as 4 okay now how do we calculate the expected number of observation okay uh, expectation means average basically what we are doing is we are doing the total average so look at this section expected number of observation total for role i and total for role row j okay for example if i want to find the expected number of observation for cell 2 comma 2 what is cell 2 comma 2 i'm just changing the color 2 comma 2 is this okay 32 if i want to find the average how will i find i am taking 110 into 113 divided by 324 okay what is 324 it is nothing but the total so if you go over here this is the 324 which means if i add all of this it is going to be 324 how do you find the average take the average of the column average of the row just multiply okay 113 and 110 i hope everybody is able to reconcile the number right this will be my expectation of that particular row okay now when i want to calculate the test statistic for this cell the same cell 38.4 we know how, how did we got what is 32 32 was the actual value in that cell okay so do you realize this is same thing that is happening x bar minus average okay and divided by now over here they are using average as the denominator if i go to this formula see expectation is at the denominator okay this is the only difference or else normally what we do is x bar minus mu and then we to put standard deviation or standard error that way okay so this is giving me the answer 1.065067 okay same this what is this formula for this is the test statistic formula okay which we have they have shown you over here if you are doing an hypothesis testing this is the process of finding the test statistic and then you have to go and find the critical value i'll show you i'll do the uh, entire thing again just to highlight the section okay uh second half what is this what is this table talking about they're talking about the expected value you realize we got an expected value of 38.4 which is over here right okay how do we got this number 41.5 okay i have to go to the previous table okay and i am changing the color to red i have to go to the previous table what is the average this is the average 119 okay and again the middle number right so 119 and 113 so I'll do this 119 into 113 and divide by 324. Okay, that should give me the average. That should give me this number. Right? Similarly, if I want to find this number 36.1, how did I got? I'll have to take the average of that row and average of that column. 
it is going to be like this 123 into 95 divided by 324 okay so this cell this entire table is the expected value cut table i'm taking a pause is everybody with me till this point Everybody all good? We're almost done. Okay. I'm moving ahead. So we we have reached till a point where we have we can calculate the test statistic. Okay. So suppose for a test statistic we sum all the nine values, square difference between the expected frequency and the observed frequency divided by the expected. Do you realize this is nothing but this is nothing but the same formula? of calculating test statistic okay we are taking the value 32 something and minus the expected value and then take do the division also square and do the division this is the same calculation but look at this number the resulting sum is 27.43 okay so why 27.43 okay what we are doing is we sum all the nine values okay over here one second, I think so. They have given you four. They have given you the critical value also from the chi square five percent. Okay, one second. I'll just come to this twenty-four. But over here they have they have gone and calculated. If my degree of freedom is four, and I'm using a chi square table at five percent, okay, can I go and find using the degree of freedom of four? Second, I have to go to back chi square. Table. This is the chi square table. Okay, degree of freedom is 4. Again, we are looking at 5%. So it has to be this. And this, the number has to be 0 0.48 and 11 point something something. Okay. We have got 9.4 one second. Q. Achha, this is one tail. Sorry. If it is one tail, then this entire area is 5%. This is the only value that you will be focusing on, 9.488. If it is two tail, then the two values will come. So my critical value from the table is over here. Okay, based on the sample data, we will reject the hypothesis that the earning growth, why we are rejecting? Because this calculated 27.43 is basically greater than the critical value. What is my critical value? My critical value is 9.488 and the calculated value is around 27.43 okay so it is rejected region okay now i think so what they have done is uh divide by the frequency the resulting is 27.4 i think so which number we were looking at 20 so the way so the way they have calculated this okay this was calculated for this number 1.067 similarly we'll calculate for all the nine values we'll, when you add you get the test statistic for the overall table and that is how it becomes again in the exam they do not expect you to do entire calculation to know what is the process okay how did we got the test statistic so this formula that we run okay this formula has to be run for over here we have run for the middle section this one we got the number is 1.06 we'll do it for each of them okay and each value each value in the table and then we'll get all the numbers with nine numbers when you add that becomes my test statistic. Any confusion till this point? Any query till this point? Let us go to this section test statistic for Spearman rank correlation for the when a sample is greater than 30. Follows what? When it is greater than 30, what do we follow? Normal distribution, na? A T. Batao. T hai ke normal hai. It has to be T, na? Because if you remember, if I just go back over here, Pierman rank. They were following T distribution. Right? The answer is A. What is the second answer? The contingency table can be used to test what? 
what when we were doing the hypothesis testing what was our decision to test we were talking about some independence that means contingency and independence right do you realize whether multiple characteristics of the population are independent dividend and earning growth rate that is what we checked answer has to be b okay for a parametric test whether a correlation coefficient is equal to zero this was the first hypothesis that we did it is least likely that what least likely for a parametric test whether a correlation coefficient is equal to zero is least likely the test statistic increase with the great sample size follow the two tier distribution and n minus two what do you think is the answer for this question least likely do we see one of the point which i marked you ask you to star that the degree of freedom is n minus two if you remember over here the first part of the chapter this part this section right it is not normally n minus one so if you look at the question that has been asked they are saying least likely look at the question least likely so answer is a follows the t distribution we know and as the sample size will increase the answer the distribution will move towards normal that is equal that has been there for our previous chapters also now where the when you have t distribution when the sample size increase it moves towards normal right so with this we have completed the chapter i hope everybody is good in this point